What's up you guys, Mikko here from thatremotelife.com and today we're gonna be talking about creating a minimalist digital nomad packing list. So this is one of my favorite topics and what we're going to do is essentially go over a list of products that I believe are essential for traveling and living as a digital nomad. We're not gonna go into a uh, huge depth of a lot of these products, um, and we're also not gonna talk about all the different things that you can own, but I kind of asked myself, what are the minimum amount of things that you need to be a digital nomad, and specifically we're gonna focus on for men, because I'm not a girl and I don't know what to pack in terms of clothing and stuff like that as a girl, but. This is for guys specifically, uh, if you wanna be a minimalist and bring as little things as possible with you. Uh, before we jump in here, uh, one of the things that you are going to notice is that I believe if you're going to be a minimalist and not really own a lot of things, you might as well own the best version of those things. So not everything that we're gonna talk about here is uh, like cheap. Uh, so I do tend to try to purchase things that are high quality and really get as much enjoyment out of every item as possible. So I do kind of look for the best option uh, in any you know kind of category. So that is one of the things that you'll notice here. And finally, uh, just to give you a little bit of an understanding of how we're going to break these things up, the very first thing uh, that we're gonna talk about, we have three categories that we're going to discuss. The first category is tech. The second category is bad. Bags, uh, and the third category is clothing. And that's kind of the widest category because we're gonna go from everything from kind of tops, bottoms, to outerwear and shoes. So without further ado, guys, let's dive in and I'm gonna show you these things uh, right here. All right, so the very first thing that you need as a digital nomad is obviously a laptop. Uh, you can't be working online and traveling without a laptop. And the one that I recommend is the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I believe that the 13 inch MacBook Pro is light enough, it travels easy, but it's powerful enough to really get everything done that you need a laptop to do. Um, so this is the one that I recommend. This is the one that I actually use myself. Um, a lot of people try to use Windows laptops because they are cheap and you can get them fixed in a lot of places all over the world. And while a MacBook is a bit more expensive and a little bit more difficult to find a place that is certified to get them fixed for you, you're gonna have a lot less problems. So this is why I recommend the MacBook Pro. Um, I wouldn't go with the top model of the MacBook Pro. I'm gonna show you guys here very quickly. Uh, there's a few different price points for them. Uh, I would just get the one that's 500 gigabytes. So you see this one on the store just 256. You really don't need this big one that's one terabyte because you can get um, like outside storage if you need it. So I'll just get this one. This is the one that I have and it's phenomenal. I've had no problems with it. The next thing that you're going to need in terms of tech, this is one that's gonna be familiar to everyone, and it is a smartphone. And the one that I recommend is the iPhone 11. I'm an Apple guy, and I love the fact that all of my Apple tech can kind of come together and sync very easily, so I do recommend iPhones, uh, but you can use any smartphone that you like. The one thing that I do say is currently the iPhone 11 is the newest model out there. I wouldn't recommend getting the Pro because I just don't think the price is worth it. What you get extra for um, the 11 Pro, I, I don't think is really that impressive. That micro camera, I don't think is that necessary. So I will say the iPhone 11 is the one to go with. Uh, the third thing that you're gonna need in terms of tech are headphones. Uh, obviously, when you're traveling uh, or working out or watching a video or on a call or anything like that, you're going to need headphones. Uh, and the ones that I recommend are the AirPods Pro. Now, as you guys can probably see, I'm wearing AirPods right now. These are not the AirPods Pro because I just haven't had the need to upgrade just yet. But at the very least, I would suggest getting a Bluetooth pair of headphones, uh, seriously making the jump from uh, tethered headphones to then getting a Bluetooth headphone that is wireless is it's 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 a game changer. Uh, everything is just so much more comfortable, so much easier. And what I've heard from people, uh, friends of mine who have the AirPods Pro and had the AirPods before that, is that it's just as big of a jump because of the noise cancellation and the comfort that you get from the AirPods Pro. Um, so if you're just getting started, you're looking to get a Bluetooth pair and you do have a bunch of uh, Apple products, especially if you have a bunch of Apple products, get the AirPods Pro. Um, 
they really are uh, great from everything that I hear and everything that I've read. Uh, I certainly am really looking forward to using them. Uh, again, you know, these are not the cheapest products on there. These are not the cheapest uh, Bluetooth headphones on the market. But like I said, if you are going to be a minimalist and own as little things as possible, uh, you might as well get really high quality items so that you get the full enjoyment out of them. Uh, moving on to the fourth product that I would recommend, it is a portable power bank. Um, guys, I can't say this enough, you need one of these. Uh, basically, I currently have the 10,000 milliamp uh, version, but I am looking at upgrading to the 20,000 here soon, the one that's on uh, this page. Uh, this is the one that actually my dad has, and I've gotten the chance to compare my 10,000 one to his 20,000 one, and I'm really impressed with the fact that the size and the weight does not really increase that much from the 10,000 to the 20,000, uh, and you get double the space. So the 20,000, you can get uh, four plus charges on your iPhone. And this is phenomenal because when you're traveling, you're using your phone, and then you know maybe it dies right when you're about to get to your Airbnb, and you just you know can't use app, uh, Google Maps and a lot of these other apps that make traveling really easy. Having this is just such a nice sort of um, insurance that like even if you use up all of your phone, um, you're never going to run out of uh, power. Uh, not only have I used this before when my phone has died or been close to dying, I've traveled with friends whose phones have died and they've been like, man, like I, I, can I borrow your, your battery bank? So this is for me, I don't really travel without a battery bank, even if it's not internationally, I just throw it in my backpack. It's not that heavy. It's not that big. Um, and it's seriously a life, uh, you know, a game changer uh, and can be really helpful in moments when you do run out of a battery. Moving on. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is a universal travel adapter, specifically this one from Kickerland. Um, I don't have this specific one. I have one that is uh, much simpler and is specifically for, uh, us to European power outlets. Uh, but this one is great because it's really, really small, really compact. Uh, it's under $10 and it's universal. So you really don't need anything outside of this, uh, travel adapter to go anywhere in the world. Uh, the important thing though to consider about this one uh, to kind of know is that this is not a power converter. This is just an adapter. So this won't actually convert the voltage uh, coming out of the socket. Uh, but the thing is that you don't really need a converter nowadays because uh, your smartphone, your laptop, your uh, tablet, all of these things have their own converters. So they will do the power con conversion. You just need an, an adapter. And I've been traveling for the last four or five years and I really don't travel with a travel converter anymore, a power converter anymore. I just have one of these adapters uh, and it gets the job done. Really the only things that you need a power converter for, I believe are things like, um, like blow dryers, everything else you should be fine with. But definitely make sure that if you are traveling with electronics that you're not sure, just double check. And the final piece of tech that we're gonna talk about here, uh, the sixth piece of tech, is actually not really something that you're going to carry with you. It's not an actual an item. It's actually your phone plan. So the one that I suggest is Google Fi. This is what I use myself. And the reason why I use Google Fi and why I recommend it to other digital nomads or um, travelers is that it comes with free international data. So whether you're in the US or abroad, you don't need to go out there and find a replacement SIM cards like you had to up until now. You know, you'd land at an airport and the very first thing you'd have to do is to get a SIM card, a local SIM card to get data um, and stuff like that. With Google Fi, you don't have to do that. It's super nice. We land an airplane, I take out my phone, I switch off airplane mode and I'm good to go. I have data uh, and that's awesome. And it's really, I think, quite affordable in my opinion. It's $50 per person. Uh, actually, that's for three people, I apologize. It's $70 per month for uh, one person, and that gives you unlimited data internationally. Uh, and make sure that you check I know that they have deals with most countries in the world, but there may be a few exceptions. So just double check if there is a country that you go to often, make sure that it's included. Um, you can get a flexible plan. And the cool thing with the flexible plan is that even if you go over six gigabytes, they, they cap it. So if you get 12 gigs, for example, of data, you won't, you won't pay more than what you would pay at six gigs. 
One of the hacks that we've used here to save some money is we have we got a group of friends together and we got a four person family plan and that really drops the cost down to $45 per person for unlimited. So that is a really great hack uh, for this. And I love it. You can use it with iPhones now and you can either, uh, you can also hotspot. So if you're abroad, you can hotspot and uh, connect the data to your laptop. The one thing I do have to warn you about Google Fi is that I have heard reports in forums and stuff like that, um, that they will cancel your plan if they feel like you're abusing it. Uh, now the cases that I've read and heard about, it seems to really have been people that truly are abusing the plans. They've been living abroad for years uh, and they're like using the data very heavily. Uh, I've been traveling with Google Fi for two years now and haven't had a problem even though I spend um, six to eight months outside of the US. Uh, I just turn on Wi-Fi, I use the Wi-Fi at my Airbnb or my apartment and whenever I do go to coffee shops, I get the password as well. Uh, that way, the only time I'm using data is really when I'm just walking around um, and in that way, I don't think it will flag anyone. So that is one thing to just consider and be aware of, but I haven't heard of anybody I know personally that's had that experience. This seems to be something that's res they're reserving, at least in the moment, for like really intense cases of uh, abuse of the data. That wraps up the tech. Really, these are the only six things that you truly need. You can't expand, you can't expand from here uh, and uh, you know get a, a tablet or anything like that. But this is the six pieces of tech that are essential for you as a digital nomad. Now we're gonna jump into what is possibly my favorite category, which is bags. Uh, I love backpacks. I love nerding out on what the best backpack setup is for digital nomad travel. Uh, and I have a really cool system here that I'm gonna show you uh, using three bags and packing cubes. So let's dive in here and I'm gonna show you my suggestions. All right, so the two backpacks, your two main backpacks that I'm going to suggest uh, are from Tortuga Backpacks. If you've never heard of Tortuga before, they make a lot of really cool uh, bags specifically for travel. Uh, and a lot of digital nomads that I know use Tortuga as well. Uh, this is the one that I would suggest as your main backpack. This is the Outbreaker 45 liter by Tortuga. Um, and this backpack is really great because they really thought about what are like the things that a professional traveler is, I think what they refer to, somebody who's traveling for work needs out of a backpack. So the backpack is 45 liters, so it has enough space to really carry uh, clothes and tech that you would need for long-term travel. The material on this is also this uh, ripstop, I believe they call it a sail, uh, sail cloth fabric that is not, it's not water, like waterproof, but it is water resistant. So your tech will be safe in there. You know, you're not gonna open up and your laptop's gonna be drenched in water or something like that. As you can see, it opens up like a clam this way, uh, kind of like I guess what I would call a hot dog style to get your clothes in. Um, there's plenty of room for you to organize all of your things, and I'm gonna show you how to actually make it even more organized than what this picture shows. In the front, there's a very nice pocket with lots of organization. One of my favorite things about all Tortuga backpacks I've tried out is they their straps are phenomenally uh, comfortable. Uh, I'm super impressed with how comfortable their straps are. And then the other really nice thing that they do as well is that they have these large three um, three point sort of backrests, and they are really kind of pronounced. Like when you pick up the backpack, you'll notice uh, they they come out quite a bit from the back. And what that allows is the it creates these two channels here, um, which gives a really nice airflow to your back so that you're not getting that sweaty back that you're probably familiar with when you're carrying a backpack for a long period of time. The cool thing with the uh, Outbreaker series, which is their professional traveler sort of series, uh, this is the one that you should get as a digital nomad, is that the very back section of it actually opens up if the first one opened up like a hot dog, this one, I guess, opens up like a hamburger, I guess you would say. Uh, but it opens up lengthwise like this. And the laptop is in the section that's right up against your back. So you can see the straps here. And then here you have um, uh, some pockets and some organization for 
some uh, bigger tech things. And the really cool thing with this is that this is a TSA compliant pocket. So it lays flat and when you're going through security, you actually don't need to take out that much tech. You just open it up like this and you let it go through uh, the scanner, the x-ray or whatever it is. So it makes going through TSA super, super easy. Here's another picture of that. Um, I do really love uh, these Outbreaker backpacks. And the second backpack that I uh, recommend getting this is sort of your uh, main carry where all of your things are going to go, but you need a day pack for when you do get to that location, you're going from coffee shop to coffee shop or something like that. And for that, I do recommend the Outbreaker day pack. Um, I have this backpack and I use it as my main carry. It's the same material, so it is water resistant. And the really nice thing is it folds down really flat. So as you can see in this picture, it really does pack really flat. So when you're traveling, you can actually, if you don't want to be carrying two backpacks, you can take everything out of this and put all of your tech in the main backpack that was shown uh, in this picture here, like it's shown here, and then just take this day pack and just kind of lay it down and, and it compresses really flat. So you can just put it in the big backpack. Uh, again, I'm really impressed with the comfort of these uh, Tortuga backpacks. These straps are not very thick, uh, width wise, but they're very wide this way. So it really handles a lot of weight um, and, and does so very comfortably. So I love this backpack. The one kind of con of this backpack is that um, the very front pocket here that they're showing doesn't have any organization in it. It's kind of like a small pocket that is just open and there's no organization inside. I wish that there was a little bit of more organization in there, like little slots so that you can organize the small things that you carry on a day-to-day -day basis a bit better. Uh, but that's really the only negative that I have for this backpack. Everything else, I love it. I've been using it for about three years and it's phenomenal. It's held up really, really well. So on to the third backpack that I recommend getting and that is the Osprey Ultralight Stuff Pack. So like the name suggests, this is a backpack that really travels well because it compresses down so small. So as you can see in this picture, it compresses down to a tiny little, it's about the size of my palm here. So if you can imagine, uh, it's about this big. And the reason why I bring this backpack with me is that I use it for two main purposes. Number one, on a day-to-day -day basis, I use it as my laundry bag. So any dirty clothes that I don't wanna mix with my clean clothes, I just stuff in there and then I put that in my main big Outbreaker backpack. And then the second reason why, uh, the second thing that I use this backpack for is actually hikes and going to the beach. I don't want to bring the the bag that I keep my laptop in, which is that Outbreaker uh, day pack, because I don't want to get sand in there and then put tech in there. Sand and tech just don't mix very well. So um, what I will do is anytime that I'm going to the beach or anything like that, I will bring this backpack um, and just I will if there's any laundry in it I'll dump it out and then just bring the things that I need for that day with me in this backpack and when I don't need it when I'm not using it it compresses really really small and takes up no space in the main backpack so this is a really great thing uh, even though it's a third backpack I really find it extremely essential moving on to the fourth backpack here this is the last sort of bag and it's not really a backpack it's not a bag it's a stuffing cube um, but I do think that these are essential and if you talk to any uh, big time traveler more than likely they will recommend that you use packing cubes so the ones that I recommend are the Amazon basics packing cubes I've been using them ever since 2017 as you can see here actually and they hold up really really well I haven't had a need to replace them and actually this is a four pack of two medium and two large and I use only the mediums and the reason why is that I have found that these two medium ones that you see here here fit perfectly in the outbreaker backpack so instead of it looking like this this is the larger 45 liter actually the two medium ones uh, one medium uh, packing cube is actually one half of this backpack so it they work really well help me keep things organized and help me really pack more things into the backpack and I use one of these medium ones for my tops and then one of the medium ones uh, for my bottoms so that's kind of how I have it broken up and they're really affordable 20 bucks I mean you can't go wrong these are absolutely essential I really don't travel uh, anywhere, even if it's a weekend trip without first putting things into a uh, packing cube. Just the organization is so worth it. 
All right, so that concludes the bag portion of this list. So, so far we've gone over the most essential tech that you need, the most essential bags that you need, and now we're gonna talk about clothing. And first I'm going to go over some of the tops, so to say, uh, the things that I bring, and then afterwards we'll talk about bottoms, and then uh, we'll talk about outerwear and uh, shoes, which is possibly the most difficult topic here. So let's jump in and check out the essential clothing that you need. All right, so the very first thing and likely the thing you're gonna use the most are t-shirts, obviously. And the t-shirts that I recommend and personally use are Bluffworks crew neck t-shirts. The really great thing about these t-shirts is that um, they have a lot of properties that the really expensive travel t-shirts have that um, are, for example, like merino wool, in that they are moisture wicking, they're quick drying, they're wrinkle resistant, and they're odor resistant as well, meaning that you don't need to wash them as much, but they're at a fraction of the cost. So if you check out merino wool t-shirts, they're usually 80 bucks or more per t-shirt, and Bluffworks has found the way to I believe they've created their own fabric here that allows the cost to be much lower while giving you a lot of the same benefits. So um, personally, I have the light gray here and the two black ones. Uh, I would suggest getting three a three pack, but do the light gray, the white, and the black. And I've personally found that you can wear one of these t-shirts about three times, so you can get three days of wear uh, from one t-shirt without it really kind of stinking up. And then because they do dry so quickly, you can actually just wash them uh, in a sink. You don't even need to throw them in the washer. And then they dry really quickly, usually just in a couple of hours. Uh, so that's what I would recommend doing is getting a three pack of them. Um, and then essentially, you know, the white is really nice because you can throw it under like a button down, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but yeah, these are phenomenal. I really, really like them. I don't think they're as good as the more expensive ones. So if you are looking for like an intense, you know, really uh, like the merino wool t-shirts that really don't stink up, they're not as good as that. But I think for the price, they're really worth it. Um, they do a good enough of a job. And plus that, I just feel weird wearing a t-shirt like eight times uh, without washing it. And just to mention that if crew neck t-shirts are not your thing, you can get v-neck t-shirts from Bluffworks. They have the same exact t-shirts um, as the crew necks, but in a v-neck uh, kind of look and also they do have long sleeve t-shirts if that's kind of what you're looking for I don't have any of these but it's not a bad idea to have one of these you know as like a, a base layer with long sleeves moving on from uh, t-shirts let's talk about uh, button downs the one that I would recommend is the uh, limitless merino button down shirt from Western Rise. I love Western Rise. Uh, they're one of my favorite brands when it comes down to kind of urban travel clothing is what I'd call it. And I don't have this particular one. I have a cheaper kind of version from Old Navy, but I will be upgrading to this one very soon. This is the only kind of button down shirt that I would bring in terms of minimal travel. It's phenomenal because it is merino. So like we talked about earlier, it's super comfortable. It's odor resistant. Uh, it's stretchy and it's quick drying. So those are like literally the perfect things that you wanna hear about a piece of clothing in terms of travel. Um, it looks really sharp in my opinion. Uh, you can get it in a bunch of different colors. It doesn't wrinkle. So it's a really great shirt for uh, travel so that you can kind of you know dress it up a little bit. If, if you need to go to like a nicer place, you're going to a nice dinner, you can dress up. Uh, but it doesn't take up a bunch of room. It's not something that requires a whole bunch of care. You know, you don't have to wash it every use. And, and you can use it if it gets a little bit chillier outside. You can just kind of throw it on top of one of those Blowforks t-shirts and you're good to go. So this is what I would suggest getting as a button-down shirt. The quality on Western Rise is always uh, really, really high. So uh, not something to worry about there. The next thing that I recommend as a top is going to be a lightweight hoodie. And the one that I uh, recommend is the Kianite Light Hoodie um, from Arcteryx. Now, I don't have this specific model. I have kind of like the, the thicker one, so like the one that's one level up from this, but I really like the lighter version because sometimes you don't necessarily want a really warm hoodie. You just want something that feels comfy, like when you're on a flight or something like that. So that's why I think this is a really great idea is that it gives you the comfort 
Uh, you know, if you're at like a co-working space and you just want to throw something on top of your t-shirt or you're on an airplane, you want to throw the hood up and just kind of be in your own little bubble, put in, you know, your noise canceling headphones. Um, I think it's it's a really good thing to have. And then also if it does get cooler, you can pair it with uh, some outerwear or a jacket like we're going to talk about later and get some pretty good coverage. So this is the one that I would recommend. I'd get a dark color um, just so that it's not easy to get dirty or something like that. But Arcturix is not known for having the cheapest things, but like I said, really high quality. I've had my Arcturix now for a year and a half, and it's phenomenal. Um, it holds up really, really well, and I'd imagine that this one would as well. All right, so that's basically everything that we're going to talk about in terms of bottoms. Now, you can get more button downs if you want to um, or you know, more t-shirts. It's really up to you, but I think that these are sort of like the base things that you need. And now uh, let's jump into bottoms. So I believe that you really only need three pairs of bottoms and those are uh, a pair of long pants, a pair of short uh, kind of uh, casual shorts, and then finally a pair of athletic shorts. So let me jump in here and show you the ones that I recommend and I use myself. So the first pair of pants I would recommend here is the Western Rise Evolution Pant. Uh, I have this pant and I actually wear it almost on a daily basis. It is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, everything from Western Rise is really high quality. This pant specifically, I really like because it's really lightweight. So even in the summer, it's not gonna make you sweat. Uh, it's really breathable. It's stretchy. So you can use it for a whole bunch of stuff. I've gone hiking in it. Here's this guy going hiking in his in this picture. Uh, they really do have a lot of kind of, it's, it's easy to move in them. Um, and the other thing that I really like about them is that Unlike most travel pants out there, they're not made out of this sort of loud material. If you've ever played around with travel pants, you're going to notice they have this like, like shh, shh, shh. they make like this sort of noise when you walk, when your uh, kind of thighs touch together when you're walking. And Western Rise has figured out a material that gives you all of the benefits of the other travel pants without that kind of sound. It doesn't have that quality. So I really love this pant for that. And then the other thing is that it packs down really, really small. So if you don't want to wear this on uh, your on the plane when you're traveling, uh, you can just roll it up and it packs down to seriously the size of a t-shirt. It, it's really phenomenal. Um, I love it and I wear it even when I'm not traveling. I, I wear it on the day-to-day -day basis when I'm here in Cincinnati. The second item here is a pair of casual shorts. And the ones that I like and wear myself are the Crossfire Slub Submersible Walk Short from Billabong. And the reason why I like these shorts is that they're really great for travel. Uh, they're very light, they're very comfortable, they're stretchy, and they're very quick drying. So uh, Billabong actually markets these as a crossbreed between a casual short and a board short. So they do say that you can go in the water and use these as board shorts. So if you don't want to bring like a separate pair of board shorts uh, and you want to get as many kind of uses out of, you know, each article of clothing, this is a great short for you. Uh, and I like this one. Um, it's got it's, it's a really nice material, it's very comfortable, uh, it's very light, like I said, and I haven't actually swam with it before, I tend to bring a pair of board shorts, uh, but when you do wash it, it seriously dries in just a couple of hours, so um, they definitely do live up to this idea of like being half casual short and a board short. Moving on to athletic shorts, the ones that I recommend are the Lululemon Pace Breaker shorts. And the reason why I love these shorts is that they have this really nifty pocket on the side, I'm gonna show you here, where you can actually stick your phone and it's right on your left hip. And I like that for two reasons. Number one, um, if you are working out, like you're jogging or something like that, that is the spot that you want your phone to be so that it's not just kind of like moving around as you're running. And number two, it's actually a really great place to stick your passport when you're traveling. So there have been a few times when I've traveled with these shorts, like I've gotten on, on flights with these shorts on, and I will stick my passport in there and it makes it into a very safe spot to carry your passport because that's a really tough thing to pickpocket. There's a zipper there. And also, sometimes uh, if you sit down in sweatpants and shorts, you've probably noticed 
there's a tendency for things to come out of it, or at least I'm always worried that, you know, whatever is in my pockets is gonna fall out, and that's not the case with a zipper pocket, obviously. So that's why I really like these uh, pace breaker shorts. They're really comfortable. Uh, you can swim in them as well. Uh, and the one thing that I would say is I have this in the lined version, but if you're only bringing one pair of athletic shorts, I'd get the linerless one so that you can reuse the shorts without washing them but just change, you know, the boxers that you're wearing. So those are kind of the three bottoms that I would recommend uh, if you're going for minimal travel. Uh, you can always expand or get more pants or, or more shorts or whatever, but these are sort of the three minimal things that I would bring. So moving on to the last category, we're going to talk about outerwear and shoes, and these are maybe the two most difficult things uh, to figure out when you're traveling as a minimalist. So let's dive in here and I'm gonna show you what I've figured out that I think is a really great solution for both outerwear and shoes. All right, so I have learned over uh, five years of travel now that I don't go anywhere without my Patagonia Nano Puff. It's seriously, every time that I don't take it with me, I regret not taking it because you never know what's gonna happen. It could be summer, but you could have one chilly day and then you're screwed because you don't have something to kind of, uh, you know, put on that's a little bit warmer. So I always travel with my Patagonia Nano Puff. And since I got my Nano Puff, they re they've released a new version called the Micro Puff. And the nice thing about the Micro Puff is that it's actually far more water resistant um, than the Nano Puff because of the material that they use as the insulation in here. So because this insulation they're using in this jacket is actually not down, it's synthetic, it doesn't retain water. So what that's what I'm trying to say here is that I would get this micro puff hoodie that has a hooded version and even though it's never going to be as good as a rain jacket if you do get caught in you know a rainstorm and you need to like dash into um a coffee shop or something like that, this can double as a rain jacket and at least protect you um, a little bit, but also be a warm jacket. So this isn't gonna be something that you're gonna go to Alaska in or something like that, but if you pair this with the light hoodie that we talked about earlier, you should be able to get a decent amount of warmth and something that can at least you know get you through uh, fall or anything that's like not super freezing temperatures. Um, I will usually pair my thicker Arcturix with my Nano Puff, and I've seriously gone all winter with that pair. So I would imagine that with a light hoodie, like we talked about, and this Micro Puff, you should be able to get through at least a majority of the winter in most parts of the world. So I love this. I don't have this particular jacket yet. I have my Nano Puff, so I haven't need I haven't had the need to upgrade, but I will likely be upgrading to this um, just to get the hooded kind of version and to decrease the things that I travel with. So the other nice thing with Patagonia is their, you know, their stuff lasts forever. Um, and if anything does rip or break on it, you just send it in and they'll fix it for you for free. So not a bad way to spend money. Uh, and then finally, the last item that we're going to talk about here is shoes. Like I said in the beginning, this is likely the most difficult item to talk about because there are lots of companies out there that are saying that they have travel shoes, but there's really no one shoe that is like perfect for everything. And I've tried all kinds of shoes from Allbirds and Converse um, to like specifically travel shoes like Suave's. And in reality, the shoe that I would say, if you could only bring one shoe, I would bring the Nike Tangent Sneaker. Now, the one that I would go for is the all black. This is the one that I have. This is actually the shoe that I work out in every day. And the reason why I would bring this one is that it's very light, it's very comfortable. You can exercise in it all day, no problem. Like I said, this is my main workout shoe, but I think that it, it does have a clean enough look that you could wear it casually uh, daily without any problem. The one thing here is that when you're traveling, you do want a shoe that can at least take a little bit of like weather. You know, uh, you're probably not gonna be traveling with rain boots, but you do want some kind of shoe that can handle weather. This was my problem with Allbirds is that the moment there was a little bit of wetness, uh, it just they just fell apart. They became really uncomfortable. The benefit with these ones 
is that even though there you don't get a lot of protection from rain or water, this mesh here is super breathable. So, uh, you know, if you get poured on, they're going to get wet right away. The nice thing, though, is that they dry extremely quickly. So even if you get caught in like a downpour and your shoes get really, really wet uh, and your socks get wet underneath, the socks you just, you know, throw in the laundry bag and you're going to wash the next time you do laundry, but the shoes will dry extremely quickly. So that's what I like about them. It's almost like if you can't beat the weather, join the weather kind of concept. Um, while the all birds that I have, they take a much longer time to dry. So this is why I like these Nike tangents. If I had to bring just one pair, it would be these ones. I will say that the soles on them, the bottoms wear off pretty quickly. So after six to eight months, you may need to replace them. Uh, otherwise they get really slippery. So, uh, I was once in Barcelona and they were definitely, you know, at the end of their use. And this was basically all flat and I was just slipping all over the place cause it had just rained. So that is one thing to look out for with these shoes. But other than that, I've been wearing these shoes since 2017, obviously replacing them every year, and they're great. I really, really like them. They're very comfortable. They're very light. And if you do decide to bring a second pair of shoes, uh, because this is all mesh up here, they do fold down quite flat for an exercise shoe, and you can stick them in your backpack and then wear whatever your other shoe is. Um, usually when I'm traveling, I will bring these ones as my exercise shoe that I throw in my backpack. And then I will have a pair of Converse, which I think hold up better to weather, uh, but are not as useful across many different things like exercise and stuff like that. So, um, that's kind of how I deal with shoes. But if I had to bring just one pair of shoes, it would be the Nike tangents. All right, you guys. Well, that's it. That is my breakdown of my minimalist digital nomad packing list. So let me know what you thought about that. Um, do you use some of these products? Do you have a better solution? Uh, do you have any brands that you suggest? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, uh, please hit subscribe. I create weekly content on the digital nomad and location independent entrepreneur lifestyle. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, definitely subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.